Hey everyone, it's that math magician. On this video, we're gonna take another look at polygons, but this time we're gonna learn how to find the area of a regular polygon. And I'm talking about any polygon you come across. As long as it's regular, doesn't matter how many sides it has, this method that we're gonna learn will allow you to find the area for that shape. Now we're gonna start for this example with a regular decagon. Remember a decagon has 10 sides, and since it's regular, we know that every side there is congruent. Now you might be thinking to yourself, oh, I could go onto Google and just Google the area formula for a decagon. But we're gonna assume that you don't have access to Google. Imagine that you're working on this on a quiz or a test, and you're trying to figure out how to find the area of this shape, and you don't have every formula memorized for every polygon, right? Imagine that, there's so many polygons out there it's actually an infinite amount. And we don't expect you to memorize the formula for let's say a decagon, or a dodecagon, or a 15gon, or a 20gon, right? These enormous amount of sides is gonna make it incredibly difficult for us to remember and memorize all of those area formulas. So hopefully with this video, you'll be able to understand the process of how you can find the area for any regular polygon, no matter how many sides it has. Now, we do see there that for this de decagon here, that it has a radius of 15 centimeters. Remember that the radius is the line drawn from the center to one of the vertexes on the outside of the shape. And I know that that length there is 15 centimeters, and that's all I know about this decagon, right? I do know that all the outside uh, sides here are going to be equal, but I don't know what their values are either. So we're kind of stuck here, right? We don't really know how to get started, but we do know we at least want to find the area for this decagon. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our, our first topic about polygons, and that is central angles. Remember with central angles, what we did with that regular decagon, and really any polygon that we came across, we talked about chopping it up into triangles. And you'll notice I'll start to do some of them here. I'm not going to do all of them, but remember, as I start to draw these other radii throughout the decagon, we see that we're creating congruent triangles there. Now, we may not know the area formula for a regular decagon, but we do know the area formula for a triangle. So here's the real key to finding the area for any regular polygon that you wanna find. The first thing you need to do with your regular polygon is you need to chop it up into congruent triangles by doing it just like this. And what's gonna be really nice is, is you're going to end up with the number of triangles inside equaling the number of sides. I have a decagon here, so that means 10 sides. And as I peek inside this shape, I notice that after I cut them all up into triangles, I end up with 10 triangles inside. So if I can find the area of just one of those triangles, then I can take the area of that triangle and multiply it by 10. Because then I'll have the entire area for that decagon. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna shift our focus now. I'm gonna draw it off here to the side. I'm going to draw out that triangle that is sitting right here at the bottom of this decagon. There's that triangle there, and I've drawn it over here. If we can find the area of that triangle, then all we gotta do is multiply it by 10 and we'll be able to figure out the area for that whole decagon. Now, I remember the area formula for a triangle is going to be base times height divided by two. And looking at this triangle, I do not know the base. And once I draw in the height, I do not know the height either. The only thing we know about this triangle is that this side over here is 15 centimeters long. So you're probably thinking, we gotta figure out the base and the height. There's no other way for us to find the area for this triangle unless we know the, the height and the base of that triangle there. And all we know is this side here is 15 centimeters long. But take a look at that triangle. Notice that I drew the height there. Remember the height is always perpendicular 
to the base. It creates a 90 degree angle there. Some of you might start to notice that what I've actually done is I've created a 90 degree right triangle that I think we can focus on and it might help us figure out what the height and the base are. So I'm gonna redraw that triangle now off to the side. Again, this right triangle is this triangle just cut in half. Notice that that tall vertical side here is still going to be our height. That this length here, the diagonal, really the hypotenuse now, is going to be 15 centimeters. But notice what happens to that base, right? Notice that the base is not the same. I can't really write base here, because if I wrote base, that would be incorrect to what the true base is, right? This B over here represents the entire length of the bottom of that triangle. Whereas this side here, that represents just half of it. Remember the height is cutting that base in half. So I could write B over two. I could write that because it is just the base divided by two. But instead what I'm gonna write so I'm just gonna write X because that fraction might get a little confusing later on. And it might be easier for us to know that X there is really just half the base. And I can make a little note of that too. I can write down here somewhere, so I'll write it off to the side here, that X is gonna equal the base cut in half. Now I have a right triangle here. I know that the hypotenuse is 15 centimeters long and I'm trying to find out the two remaining sides. And a little light bulb should be going off in your brain at this moment. Because if I knew an angle in there, I could just use sine, cosine, or tangent to help me solve for those sides. And the good news is, is that we can definitely find out what one of those angles are. Let's go back to our decagon here. Remember, we split the decagon into 10 congruent triangles. And on all of those congruent triangles, this top angle here the central angle, remember they're all meeting in the middle to form 360 degrees. That central angle there is the angle here at the top of this triangle. And we can find it. We can find it just by taking 360 divided by the number of sides. Now, if you're dealing with an example and your example is not a decagon, let's say in an octagon or a hexagon, you're gonna to need to divide by the number of sides for your shape. For me, since I have a decagon here, I know I'm dividing by 10 sides. You need to divide by the number of sides for your shape. But once I take 360 and divide it by 10, I see that I end up with 36 degrees. So the central angle of the decagon, which is really the top angle of this triangle, is 36 degrees. Now I need to transfer that information over here to the right triangle. Here's that top angle. But again, the height here is cutting that angle in half. It bisects the base, it bisects the top angle. So that 36 degrees here is actually going to turn into 18 degrees. So wow, let's take a moment and see just how far we've come here. Right, we started with the decagon. We cut up the decagon into 10 congruent triangles. 10 sides, 10 congruent triangles. We focused our attention on one of the triangles. Realized we needed to know the height and the base. But all we know was that the diagonal is 15 centimeters. But we did find that the central angle is 36 degrees because 360 divided by 10 is 36 degrees. We cut that in half to form our right triangle and now we have an angle and a side, and we're trying to find the two remaining sides. This is where we can use some good old trigonometry, sine, cosine, and tangent to help us solve for the height and for x, which is half the base. So that's what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna set up a sine ratio to help me solve for x. I'm gonna set up sine of 18 degrees opposite over hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse. So X over 15. So I can see there, after I put this over one, I cross multiply. I know that X is going to equal 15 times sine of 18 degrees, 
We can punch that in and figure out what X is going to be in a second. Now what I also know, let me scoot this up so I can have enough room for the next problem. I also know that I can set up cosine to solve for H. I'll set up, let me pick a different color here, cosine of 18 degrees. That's gonna equal adjacent over hypotenuse, H over 15. Again, once I cross multiply this guy, I'm gonna end up with H equaling 15 times cosine of 18 degrees. That's what I can plug into my calculator and I'll be able to figure out what those two missing sides are. Again, yours is gonna be different depending on the side length of your hypotenuse and the angle based off of how many sides you have. So I'm gonna open up my free online calculator powered by desmos.com to help me figure out what X and H equal. So I have 15 times sine of 18 degrees, 15 times cosine of 18 degrees. I now know that half my base is 4.635. Go ahead and write that out, 4.365. Put a little box around that. I also figured out that the height is 14.266. 14.266. Six, six. I also realized that I did make a mistake for 4.635. I misplaced those two numbers there. Let me go ahead and switch those around. 635. There we go. We know the height and we now know the base. We can jump back to our original triangle here. I now know that the height is 14.266 centimeters and I know the base is double of x. Remember, x is only half the base. Don't forget that step. I got to double it to find out what this base is. So I'm going to get my calculator out. So I'm going to get my calculator out and I'm going to type in 4.635 times that by 2. I see that the base is approximately 9.27. I can now plug that in to find the area of my triangle. I know that I'm gonna have the base of 9.27 times the height of 14.266. All of that divided by two, and we'll find the area of our triangle. Now for you, since you guys are probably dealing with a different shape, you're clearly gonna have different numbers than me, but you just need to plug those in so you can find out what your area is for your triangle. Let's see, all of that divided by two. I see that the area of one triangle inside my decagon is 66.123, whoops, 66.123 centimeters squared. Now, I am not interested in the area of one of my triangles. I'm interested in the area of the decagon. Since I'm trying to find that area, I know that there are 10 inside so I'm going to need to take that area of my triangle and I'm gonna to need to multiply it, whoops, of the triangle, I need to multiply that by the 10 sides. Again, yours is gonna be different. If you have an octagon, you're multiplying the triangle by eight. If you have a nonagon, you're multiplying by nine. If you have a 50gon, you're multiplying by 50 here. Whatever you multiply here on this last step is based on the number of sides that you have. So I know I'm taking 10 and I'm multiplying it by 66.123. Well, this is gonna end up being nice and easy because it's just multiplying by 10. And that means I gotta move the decimal over one spot. So this ends up being 661.23 centimeters squared. That right there is the area of a decagon by chopping it up into triangles. And this method, while it seems like a lot of work at first, it's actually not that much crazy of math going on, right? Let's kind of recap again what we did for this example here. We cut up the triangle. The sh I'm sorry, that we cut up the polygon into a triangle. We focused in on that triangle. We realized very quickly that we needed to learn the height and we needed to learn the base. Well, we cut that triangle into a right triangle we had to find our central angle, 360 divided by the number of sides. 
We had to cut that angle in half because we made a new right triangle. Then it just became a sine and a cosine problem. Solving for X, solving for H. We put H back in for the height. We had to double X to get the real base because remember X was half the base. Plugged into the area of our triangle formula and we figured out what the area was for one triangle, but we knew that we need to multiply that number by 10 since we were trying to find the area of our decagon. This process might seem like a lot of steps, but when you're working on a quiz or a test and you don't have access to Google to look up formulas, this is the method you wanna use, okay? Cut your regular polygon up into triangles, congruent triangles, and as long as you know a side and the central angle, you can find your base and height and get your area. It's that math magician. I'll see you next time.